This episode brought to you by ExpressVPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. finally come to this. A movie about a killer tire. A movie about a killer tire. You probably heard that idea and had a similar reaction I did, which was... <laughs> but they did it. They made a movie about a killer tire. You might be asking yourself, why did they make a movie about a killer tire? Well, you clicked on this damn video, didn't you? You just answered your own question. After years and years of being asked to review this stinker, I'm finally gonna give him. Uh, critic? Are you talking to us or the viewers at home? Which one makes me look more clever? Neither. Then neither. Okay. Yeah, I just blew your mind, didn't I? If you want to think that? Yeah, I blew your mind. Anyway, I figure I explain what you're about to see as an excuse to why it exists. Isn't that like a poet explaining what a poem is in the poem? Well, when you put it like that, it sounds even deeper. Maybe you should just get to the review. Yeah, okay. Let's take a look at the film you have to see to believe, and you have to believe to see. Oh, okay, I get it. Go like this. I'm not doing that. We gotta, otherwise he's not gonna start the review, right? Yeah, I blew your mind. Let's take a look at Rubber. be that nostalgic, but I'm sick to death of getting requests for it. So here it is, an actual movie about a killer tire. Released in 2011, Rubber is another one of those polarizing films where critics seemed to like it okay, but audiences felt very disappointed. It's a movie about a killer tire, you dumbasses. Quite frankly, you deserve whatever movie they give you. There is no bar to meet! So, is there a secret gem that's smarter than it looks? Or is it so bad that even people who paid to see a killer tire feel let down? Again, I don't know how you let a crowd like that down. Well, it might sound strange, but this film is worth a deeper analysis. So, let's take a look at- Critic, why do we have to watch this from a distance? It's symbolic. Of what? Well, if you have to ask, you clearly don't get it. I know, that's why I asked. He's so naive. He is such a jackass. Let's take a look at Rubber. We open our film with, you know you have one job, show a tire, that's a chair. I can see why people hated this. Just when you're wondering if this is an Ikea uprising, a car shows up, knocking them all down. So this is an Amish driving test. Forget it, buddy. Even that amount of binoculars won't help you find the plot. A man in a cop uniform gets out of the trunk and gets a glass of water from the driver. Well, I'll be following this just fine. In the Steven Spielberg movie, E.T., why is the alien brown? No reason. In Love Story, why do the two characters fall madly in love with each other? No reason. In The Pianist, how come this guy has to hide? when he plays the piano so well. At this point, a 
killer tire would be normal? He goes on explaining other random questions from movies that have no answer. Or maybe they do, they're just asked in really dumb ways. In the excellent Chainsaw Massacre by Toby Hooper, why don't we ever see the characters go to the bathroom? Well, I can't account for the excellent Chainsaw Massacre before the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think it's because the director wasn't a sicko. I mean, okay, he was, but not you kind of sicko. The answer to all of these, he suggests, is the same. No reason. No reason. No reason. Absolutely no reason. Why did the second oldest boy in Malcolm in the Middle never have a family? No re-son. Why did the moon never receive an email from his favorite ball of gas? No re-son. Why did- I have five more, but I'll stop. You know, as goofy as this opening is, I'm not gonna lie, I really feel like it belongs at the beginning of a much more appropriate movie. Wouldn't this fit a lot more with something like... The film you are about to see today is an homage to the no reason. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Wouldn't that weirdly make a lot more sense? So after putting the pretend and pretentious, we see he was talking to a group of people who are given binoculars to, well, watch the movie, I guess. It's already boring. Well, I can guess what movie they were watching. As the credits roll and we see Burr finally had enough with Ernie shit, we finally see the title. But more importantly, we see the director's credit immediately after the title. Yeah, he wants you to know what movie you're watching, but he especially wants you to know who to blame for it. Oh wait, I've seen this! It travels across the world, connects to other parts, and puts the Iron Giant back together again! And they said Split was a surprise sequel! The tire seems to learn how to... live, suddenly, and starts moving on its own. The tire continues to move around, but is having trouble keeping his balance, thus moving around like he's being controlled by a Wii remote. He comes across his first antagonist in the movie, though. A water bottle! MURDERER! He then comes across a scorpion. It's gonna be a long movie, isn't it? He then comes across a beer bottle, which he can't seem to crush. So he uses his psychokinetic powers to blow it up. Yeah, tires have those now. <laughs> Thus his minor trail of nuisance continues. The onlookers comment on what they're seeing. Looks like he has telepathic powers. You mean psychokinetic? I don't care about the right word. I think the kid is right. Psychokinetic powers. Excuse me, but do you have to comment everything aloud? Yeah! So the tire continues to roll and blows up a can this time. I'll admit I'm not getting much from the tire's performance, but he does still give more emotion than Kristen Stewart. Ooh, things are getting really exciting because now we have a musical score. You clearly missed a perfect opportunity to play a more fitting song. Them tumbling down. But it looks like he's tired, it's not worth it, as he rests and gets up the next morning to continue his travels. Well that happened! Meanwhile we see how this film was financed with one of the guys in charge stealing from one of the viewers. Let's go! Come on! <sighs> Where is he? Straight ahead. He just woke up. Okay, just tell me. Is this the Cabin in the Woods universe? Is the tire just one of the killer monsters that escaped and the onlookers are just monitoring the progress? I'd have mixed thoughts, but it's better than no thoughts. Look, the tire is drinking water. You know, it's the weirdest things that leave you empty. He finally comes across a living mammal and tests his powers on it. Yeah, what the hell, Doc? Odd musical choice for an odd segment. You know, this movie is feeling less like a horror film and more like an old school Miller Lite commercial. You worked hard, had a long week, and are celebrating your best friend blowing up a rabbit. Your best friend is a tire. Now more than ever, it's Miller time. Because you work hard, you play hard, and that tire can turn your brain to spaghetti sauce. Miller. 
Because if you're watching a killer tire, you're probably drunk already. A woman drives by in a convertible, catching the tire's attention. I shall free you, my manacled brethren! He was run over by Dr. Gonzo and his attorney. We can't stop here! This is Firestone Country. She continues to drive on as the tire comes across a guy at a gas station. What's the most you ever lost in a coin toss, friendo? Oh my god. I hope you like that. If not, how did Peter Venkman put it? You only have 75 more to go. Wait, that tire matches the description! Turn around! He comes across a hotel where a part of me is hoping he'll reenact Psycho as the onlookers continue to bring the annoyance of watching a movie at a theater to the comfort of your home. Oh, uh, yeah. Jeez, you think you're gonna shut up sometimes and let us watch in peace? I can't stand it. <laughs> Come on, can't you take a little joke? Yeah, there's plenty of space. Go somewhere else if we're bothering you. Why do I feel like these people were conned by Nathan Fielder? I promised these people an interactive movie experience without movie theater hassles, but I had no interactive movie to show, so I kept them at a safe distance and said it was about a killer tire. I feel like I could only get away with this in California. Fear not, though, it gets weirder! There was one side, so let's see if it's worth the other side, instead of just to the opposite side of the block. Mmm, working on his Arolbex. It's surprisingly hard to think of a joke about a tire in a hotel room watching workout videos! Meanwhile, in the same hotel, one of the guys running the show is given a call. Oh, <clears throat> yes, master. I understand perfectly. I'm, I'm gonna do it tomorrow morning without fail. So, just to recap, a guy in a hotel gets a call from the master while he has a turkey in his room. Well, I for one think it's about time a Manos Thanksgiving Wings of Fate finally got aired. God, how do I have an easier time coming up with that joke than this one? The next morning, after a few days without eating, the onlookers are given the roasted carcass of Poultrygeist. <laughs> Christ, it's like 3 p.m. at the Old Country Buffet. A staff member seems to interrupt the tire shower. <gasps> they didn't tell me there was nudity in this! And big shock, the tire does not take this with Goodyear humor. Well, she's a maid, so she can clean herself up. The tire then watches TV and checks out the woman in the pool. You think his fascination with humans is seen as strange to others? Like, is his interest made fun of by other tires? Hey, you see Carl recently? Yeah, I hear he's into that people stuff. You think he's a human-y or something? He has to be. Oh, wait, here he comes. Hey, Carl, so you get off having sex with humans or something? Ew! <laughs> you know it's true, man. <laughs> Actually, that's a common misconception. Not all humanies want to have sex with humans. Some of us enjoy the creative lifestyle, designs, and overall environment. You, you have, have sex, sex with humans! humans. You, you have sex with... Yeah, why do I forget you can do that? So... Do you find the Michelin Tire Guy sexy? Yes. Somebody is after you! I have no idea if that's true, I never even met you, but going by statistics of online crime... Someone probably is! There's a lot of snoops and hackers out there, and you want to be careful and you want to be smart. That's why it's good to use ExpressVPN. Like me, you can feel safe knowing that your information is protected. Trust me, you need a VPN because without it, your information can be tracked by ISP, cellular providers, ad companies, and hackers. When you use a VPN though, your public IP is masked. So even the websites you visit won't be able to identify you. But also trust me when I say ExpressVPN is the best VPN. It has the fastest speeds, faster than any other VPN provider, server locations in over 94 countries giving you plenty of options to choose from, 24-7 customer service whenever you need it, apps for every device including Windows, iOS, Android, Mac, Linux, router, and even more, and it's easy to use, you can connect with just one click. It has the best-in-class encryption, 256-bit AES, and it's the market-leading VPN, rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar. This is such an important item to get, and this is such a good company to get it from. And you can for less than $7 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. 
Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking on the link in the description box. ExpressVPN.com slash Nostalgia Critic. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Nostalgia Critic for three months free with a one-year package. So what are you waiting for? Get what you know you need. Visit ExpressVPN.com slash Nostalgia Critic to learn more. Take back your privacy today. The son of the owner of the hotel says he saw a tire close one of the doors. The owner doesn't believe him and commands he gets him a pizza. And don't forget the double toppings! I like the idea of making a kid's punishment your reward. He seems to come across this totally pointless hitchhiker guy. Whoa! Well, that's just rude. Clearly two people could fit on that bike. Say, here's some double toppings. Here's your double toppings. Stop doing my jokes! The tire, meanwhile, falls in the pool. as the onlookers seem to get sick from the food they ate. Oh, what is happening to us? <laughs> they poisoned you. The turkey was a trap. Oh, someone took your audience! Do I take it this is where a tire bursts out of one of their stomachs? Oh, don't worry, ma'am. They're not gonna get away with it. I'm still here. God bless you, onlooker, doing whatever it is you're doing for whatever reason you're doing it. Ooh, more toppings. Did she just put orange juice on her breakfast? Did anybody watch this film while they were making it? This tire's alive. He locked himself Okay, okay in. you know what? I I've heard enough rubbish for the day, all right? Now get that dirty tire out of the pool, or I'm gonna get really mad. And there's not nearly enough bird guts on this pizza to make it edible. Meanwhile, the cop from the beginning of the movie seems to ask the same WTF-ness as before. Don't you find it strange we can't see the air around us? Don't you think it's weird we're not giving refunds to the viewers of this movie? But in a very odd turn, yeah, I know what I said. The cop says the poison has had enough time to kill the spectators and so everyone can stop. Everyone, however, has no idea what he's talking about. You can all go home to your families now. You out of your mind? Stop acting like this is real life. I'm telling you we're done. There's no one watching anymore, okay? Moviegoers have clearly left the theater by now. There's no point in continuing. He tries to prove it by having somebody shoot him, and it has no effect. It's not real. You understand? You know, if you just slapped these two names on the title, this would have the biggest cult following in the world. The cop is told, though, that one of the onlookers is still alive because he didn't eat. Which apparently means the film has to keep going. So he returns to question the owner of the hotel. Mr. Hughes? Okay, either Deadpool directed this movie, or this is Bad Lieutenant 3. I'm fine with either, just pick one. Or both. Just give me something! The tire finds a mirror and... thinks back to the glory days? Sometimes you just gotta ask yourself, how can I see my reflection with no eyes? Or, um, what's this hole I feel in my body? Or maybe, um, when should I retire? What am I supposed to do with this? The boy sees the tire and tries to figure out what's going on. Do you talk? Me? Human? Boy? Hey, answer me! So how was your day, son? Well, I went to school, asked a girl out, and then demanded a tire to talk to me. We took you off those meds too soon. So the cop gives an idea for the suspect they're looking for. This is what our killer looks like. Tire. Exactly. I'm honestly shocked they didn't utilize their sketch artist for this one. One of the cops, though, has a question. Is it black? That didn't happen. It just felt good. The cops find the tire and stop right behind him. Not getting out of the car because I don't know. You want to know how I got these skid marks? Wait, let me take a wild guess what happens. Oh yeah, I should have put that together. 
One of the guys running things tries to poison the last onlooker, but he refuses to eat. So the other guy does. Huh. Okay. This stuff was supposed to be for you to eat. <sighs> the Suicide Squad from Life of Brian was easier to take out than you. He sees a burning tire pile and goes absolutely insane because over the next three days, he goes on a killing spree. He gives a ton of people the scanner treatment and then watches, I guess, his version of the Olympics. One of the cops finds the tire, though, as they let the guy in charge know who's apparently playing chess. You can't do that. Really? Well, you can if you want, but uh, it's against the rules. That's good to know that this film graduated from the Freddy Got Fingered school of advertising. We know we don't know what we're doing. Get a load of this. They're actually attempting to Woody Woodpecker his ass. Come on. You like me? You think I'm sexy? This scene makes no sense at all. So the onlooker comes around and says, This scene makes no sense at all. Stop doing my job! The onlooker suggests that just shooting the tire will end the movie faster. But one of the cops brings up this good point. Yeah, but then we wouldn't be here if you'd eaten a damn turkey. Well, that's true enough. Is this a Looney Tunes cartoon written by Charlie Kaufman? So Ian, I have to admit, maybe my favorite anticlimactic death of any movie monster, the cop goes in saying he's just gonna blow him away, shoots him off screen, and then throws the carcass on the onlooker. Ian, bye. It's like in Halloween if Michael Myers went out like this. <laughs> he blowed up, exit to your right. I have to admire what a slap in the face that is. But there's a twist in this ending. I guess. It comes back as a tricycle and blows up the onlooker. Hey, baby. He's off to play Invisible Paperboy as he's apparently gathered a tire army to follow him. And that seems to be it. Okay, so on the whole, I can't act like it was, oh, there's more. Like several minutes more. The final image, I guess, is the tricycle and his Dawn of the Tread heading to Hollywood. The credits also show the cop giving the intro speech again, only this time it's to literally nobody. Yet he still does it word for word. Why do some people love sausages and other people hate sausages? No fucking reason. Call me crazy, but I didn't think a movie about a killer tire would require Return of the King number endings. Come on, don't waste your time explaining that garbage. Let's go. Just a minute. Let me finish. Ah, shoot, I was hoping the final image would be Woody Harrelson with flaming red hair saying there will be carnage. What the burning rubber did I just watch? On the one hand, I guess I can see why some people didn't like it. A lot of questions about this world are raised and are never answered, and it even seems like some of the jokes are set up and no real punchlines are delivered. But as the film clearly states in the opening, it has no reason. If anything, it kind of feels like a troll film. It still has laughs, it still has gore, it still has a killer tire. It just doesn't really care much on the story, so it refuses to have much of one. It's almost like the movie focuses on the spectacle of such a crazy idea rather than the crazy idea itself. Which you could argue some horror films already do without even acknowledging it. And I have to admit, I kind of like that. So yeah, if you look at this less like a human centipede kind of dumb and more like an artsy Return of the Killer Tomatoes kind of dumb, I think you'll get a fun experience. It's weird, it's silly, it makes little sense, but it gave a tire killing people and a few surreal laughs. I guess for the kind of film it is, that's enough for me to say roll on in and enjoy. So that's it, another nostalgia ween in the can. Next week, I'm back to my normal reviews and... I have to admit though, I didn't really get a monster movie that made me really mad, like super, super mad. Oh, don't worry, critic. After next week's review, we've got one that'll hurt you good. Really? You don't actually have a movie, do you? No, I just wanted the last line of the review. Oh, great, what terrible movie are we gonna say we found? <laughs> Hi, I'm a dinosaur. I just made a sculpture. It's called King Dom. Oh no! My fallen King Dom! Well, those are my clues. I got it. The Phantom Ma-
in the excellent Chainsaw Massacre by Toby Hooper, why don't we ever see the characters go to the bathroom? Hey folks, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and this week the charity ties into our What You Can Do video, uh, which is Friends of the Forest. Uh, we went out to this forest preserve where uh, a ton of people showed up and they were just helping the forest look great and, you know, protect the wildlife there and just a lot of cool people and they were nice and they were having fun and they were joking around and uh, it was really, really cool. It was so nice just getting together and seeing all these people sort of come around and do something that's so good for, you know, people and the environment and uh, it was just a nice, nice group, and uh, we're promoting them today. Uh, so what we're going to show is a snippet of the video from uh, the What You Can Do video, which shows how you can volunteer, but you can also donate. Uh, either are welcome. Uh, like I said, this is a really wonderful organization. They're so cool, and uh, you definitely got to check them out, which you're going to right here. Check them out. My name is Radhika Moralia. I work for Friends of the Forest Preserves and we support the restoration and engagement efforts of the forest preserves of Cook County. My name is Jeff Scretney. I'm one of the volunteers that works for the forest preserve and I'm one of the leaders here at Labau Woods. And what are you doing today? We're planting 96 locally grown native shrubs to replace shrubs that we've lost due to invasive species. Friends of the Forest Preserves uh, was established 20 years ago. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. Nice! Yeah, we are a small nonprofit grassroots group um, that saw a need to uh, get more support for the Forest Preserves of Cook County and their initiatives to help restore the health of the Forest Preserves. We offer different ways of engaging people, so if you're not ready to jump in and get your hands dirty and cut down invasive species, um, we also like to work with people to get them out canoeing or hiking, different kinds of educational events, and all supporting the Forest Preserves of Cook County's mission to engage people in the enjoyment of natural areas in the area. You always hear uh, a lot of people say it's important to look after uh, forest preserves and the environment. What's a reason to do this that people usually overlook or they don't think about? The forest preserves in the city offer habitat or home for a great diversity of plants and animals that you wouldn't expect to find in a city environment. What it does for your health to get in the forest is very important, but we know that there's 1,000 different species that we've cataloged here that live here. This is their home, and they were here before us. A lot of volunteers showed up to the, well, over 50 people, I think, showed up to this. It sounds like they kind of come from uh, different groups and organizations and stuff like that. What's the process there? The various organizations that are involved, we all communicate regularly about what's going on and try to work collaboratively. We all have the same goal of trying to conserve nature and engage people with nature. Our main goal is we want people to come out and have a good time. We recognize everybody is a volunteer and volunteers want to have fun. They don't want to come out and feel like they work their butts off like too much or that it was like a job. When we have a group like this, it's a big group today, you said 50 some people, no one's going to have to do too much and everybody's going to feel like they had a great day and made a difference. Well, if people want to volunteer or donate or find out anything more about Friends of the Forest, I want you to look right in that camera and tell them where they can go online. F-O-T-F-P dot O-R-G or Friends of the Forest Preserves if you want to Google it. Awesome, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank, <laughs> thank you for thank coming out. Thank you for out. what you're doing, this is so cool.